Um, hi, my name is Rahim Shaddad. I am the curator of the exhibition Disturbance in the Nile, um, a contemporary Sudanese art, um, which we are inaugurating at Casa Arabe and will continue until the summertime, end of June. Uh, this exhibition represents a very important um, uh, activity or event uh, for, 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 for Sudanese art as these, and for us personally as these collections represent some of the last um, remaining works of some of the artists uh, we have in the exhibition um, due to the war that started on the 15th of April la last year. Um, we literally managed to get these works out um, two days before the war started, so we were very lucky to have these works here. The exhibition includes nine painters and, in, and two video artists. Um, some of the works I have behind me is Yasmin Abdullah, which is one of the uh, painters, and she's an illustrator. Um, the painting behind me very easy, very clearly depicts um, the chess game that is happening between the militants and how they always the person losing is always the the community and the public. And um, there's a lot of messages that you will find in the show, uh, messages that are either um, political, either um, social and communal, and um, uh, archival in a way or another of the experiences that Sudanese people have went through, um, not only during the war, but um, we're speaking about 30 years of um, political unrest and political uncertainty. Sudan has gone through 30 years of limitations on expression, on um, the ability for artists to find platforms where they could express and talk to the community. It was very limited. Even the act of resistance or, or the artist activism was the bare act of just painting. Uh, and that was due to al-Bashir regimes, which was a, was a very ideological and authoritarian regime that controlled a lot of what the narrative of identity could be in, in, in public spaces. Um, and then we moved from that to suddenly the uh, explosion of art that happened with the revolution, which was um, where the artists went on the street and they started painting murals. So, um, and they actually led the revolution itself. And so suddenly there was this huge um, sort of spaces for conversation between visual arts and the public sphere and the public people. Um, and, and people started to appreciate what, what the uh, work of arts and the visual artworks could do in terms of um, rallying people in terms of um, expressing what the people want and need and, uh, and justice and equality. Um, and that was during 2018-2019 revolution. And following that, there was a huge boom to the art world. Uh, many galleries started to open, many um, exhibitions were happening in the city of Khartoum and around Sudan as well, um, whether they're photography, conceptual art or painting. Um, and many other things. And what, this is what we tried to focus on during this show. We tried to focus on that narrative, that different, different, different narrative and, and, and how it shifted and how it changed throughout generations. Um, what issues did each generation find to be important and in what ways did they express that issue? And how did the iconographies and the tools and the mediums start to differ with time? We try to depict that. We have three paintings in the show that are actually post-war. Post so they were painted actually between 2023 and 2024. They were painted after the war, um, which also depicts a very completely interesting um, story of, of exile, of, of uh, longing, and of, of a, lot of, a lot of things. And also like finding um, serenity, you know, after such an abruptive um, um, experience that, that could happen to someone. The search for identity or the search for a way to express the Sudanese identity has been a, um, a subject for a lot of the artistic research that artists has done throughout generations. One of the most interesting stories, and this is one of the reasons why we selected this artist to be in this show, is, uh, is the story of Muhammad Abdullah Otebi behind me. Um, and, and he's one of the old generation artists where that, that question was an act of, uh, of resistance. In Otebi's work, we find a lot of elements of calligraphy, but also we find the very linear way of painting the faces, which is a very African way of painting the faces. So in his works, he's actually considered to be one of the most prominent artists in, um, in painting the Afro-Arab um, sort of uh, illustration of the Sudanese, um, basically the Sudanese story and the Sudanese uh, identity. Um, and in, in, in a lot of the show, we'll find like different ways where that, that, that conversation starts to appear. We'll find artists that focus more on mystical element, which comes more of our African ancestry and African origin. And we find other artists that are talking more about the spiritual journey of Sufism and Islam and, and, and the Arab side of, of, of Sudan. 
So we have a mixture of both. We found um, uh, artists and Nat Sharif and Hassan Kamil um, created these beautiful videos that are um, super conceptual to express to us post-war feelings and post-war experiences, not even post-war, it's actually during war experiences of how they left their houses, how they uh, migrated away from Khartoum. In the show we have um, three female artists, uh, which each one of them is, you know, is telling us a very powerful um, um, story and version of the story as well. I think the experiences of all the artists, the men and women, is, is sort of like in terms of like going through the war and going through um, also the political adversity that has been happening in 30 years. Um, the experiences could be very much similar, but I think the way of expressing, I think the women actually kind of led um, the movement of individuality and the movement of um, expressing their personal stories and then finding relevance um, using that. So I think, I think the women artists that we have in this show, whether it's Yasmin or Rime Jali or Miska, actually led that movement. Rime Jali is one of the first people to paint her bedroom um, in her own private space and find people that would connect to her story in that kind of way. Um, Yasmin literally uses iconographies that only defines her. Um, and, and she tells us the story through that. Uh, so, so we have we have we have three women in, 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 in the exhibition, also from various generations. We have Miska as well, Miska Mohammed. That um, she is an icon as well. She's one of the first women artists that we see who migrated from Sudan on her own to, to you know to search for her for her own career development and her own her own thing. And she migrated to Nairobi. I think it was around 2020, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. And she moved there after she did her first solo show at Circle Art, one of the biggest galleries in Nairobi. And she led this uh, movement that a lot of female artists started to follow. And for me, it's been a disaster because I knew that the one who suffers from these wars, well, everyone suffers, but it's the woman. The woman who has to sustain the family, the family dies, her husband or her husband, or whatever. There's been a desplazamiento muy fuerte, uh, pero gracias a la mujer que ha sido uh, el que más uh, mantiene todo y eso se parece en mi, todos mis cuadros la mujer, no solamente como un elemento mort, uh, importante para seguir la vida en Sudán, sino también por su forma de vestimenta sudanesa, que al top, que es, es, es el único color que puedes ver en, en los espacios vastos de Sudán, desierto y esto. Es el color que siempre da la esperanza de vivir en, en, en paz. Gracias.